Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Holy Father, we are thankful because you love us. We are thankful because we have the opportunity to, to meet together in your holy place in a new Sabbath. We are thankful because we have the privilege to know the truth about Sabbath and we have the privilege to live in a country where we can freely worship you in the Sabbath day. Our God, I want to ask you to bless all those who are present here uh, in the church and they want to worship uh, you. And I'm asking your presence to be among us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to congratulate all of you who are here, who arrive in time for the divine service. I want also to appreciate all those persons who were present during the Sabbath School discussion. And um, I want to uh, think that uh, you can find peace here uh, in the church. You can have a moment of peace in this Sabbath day, uh, this Sabbath before the uh, week of exams, the exams week. And um, I encourage you now to look around you, to look in your left, in your right, behind you, in front of you, and give a smile. Give a smile to the person who are around you. You can tell them happy Sabbath also. It's good to smile. This uh, action of smiling, uh, it's somehow um, like a mirror. If you smile to someone, if that person is not very, very uh, sad, he will smile back to you or she will smile back to you. It's very important to, to smile. It's free to smile. And uh, fun fact, uh, you use uh, less muscle to smile than to be uh, sad. 
so uh, less energy to, to spend. So it's easier to smile than to be sad. <laughs> now, um, I encourage all of you to, to think of the fact that here in the church we ask for the presence of God and He is with us. He promised us that if two or three are together and uh, we ask Him to be with us, He will be with us. So think about this truth and try to, to have this moment of worship with God. And now, when we will sing together, I encourage you to be happy when you sing and to worship God through singing. Amen. Day by day. Oh
He sings him, He Lead at Me, 537.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you give me some smiles? Praise the Lord. That is beautiful. We thank the Lord that he has given us this um, opportunity to come before his presence and worship. And right now, it's our time to pray, to reflect on the word of God. Um, Psalm 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. How many of us believe that? Amen. Uh, Today we're going to reflect about something. Has God ever answered you and you resent the answer or you despise the answer and you make God look a fool before you because he didn't answer you the way you wanted? I want to read shortly a small story here to bring out what I would like to share with you. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, there is a, a very good story. <clears throat> now Naaman was a commander of the army of the king of Aram, and he was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram, and he was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to the mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means go, and the king replied, I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him 10 talents of silver and 6,000 shekels of gold and 10 sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter, I am sending you my servant Naaman, that you may heal him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God that I can heal, that I can give life? And when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me and he will know have the man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Eli- Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in Jordan, and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. Hear the response of Naaman. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that you would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over my spot and cure me of my leprosy. And not Abana and Fapa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the rivers of Israel, couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned away and went off in bridge. Has it ever happened to you when you pray to the Lord and he answers you and you walk away in rage because you're not satisfied with the kind of answer he has given you? You resent the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Never rely on what you think you know. When you come to the presence of God, is he God before you or have you come to consult and even give him advice on how he's going to answer you? So I want us to reflect on our lives. We all have issues in our lives that we seek the Lord and he answers us and we think about how he would have done it better. I pray that you may reflect about it. Could be God answered you. Could be you have already what you needed, but because you're resentful, you despise the answer, you're not getting what you want. So let's reflect about it, and we pray for the Holy Spirit to always guide us that when we come before his presence, we get the answer as he wishes to give it to us.
Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before your holy presence. We are grateful of your presence in our lives. We have seen that you answer the prayers of those who fear you, that when we seek you with all our hearts, we surely find you. But Lord, most of the times we have our ways. We think our ways are better than your ways. We come to you having ideas of how you're going to help us. And you cease being God in our lives and we take over your position. Right now I present your children before you. They could have an issue in their lives and you answered. But because they have somewhere they're looking up to, they have not recognized your answer. We pray, Lord, that you may forgive us. We pray that you may open our eyes to see, to know that your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts. May you hear the prayers of those who are seeking you right now. I present those who are sick. I pray that you may stretch your hand to heal them. I pray for those who are struggling in in their lives, it could be in their marriages, in their relationships, in their studies, in their employment. In their lives, there is trouble or there is a dissatisfaction. Lord, I present everyone before you. I pray that you may heal the brokenhearted. I pray that you may set the captives free. I pray that you may bring joy to sudden hearts, O oh Lord. And I pray that you may give confidence to those who have lost it in your word, that when you answer us, we may recognize that this is an answer from the Lord. But above all, Lord, I pray a blessing upon everyone who has come. May we leave this place blessed. May we come out of this uh, place hopeful and grateful and joyful and patient and with an increased faith. I pray that you may continue blessing us as we continue to worship. Thank you, Jesus, for your masses. Amen. How is our church? God is good. And all the time. God is excellent. God is good. And all the time, amen. Barbara, I like your bass. <laughs> uh, welcome to all of you to this service, uh, this morning's service. It's good to see as many of us here again this Sabbath. Last week, uh, some of you were on the road with Freedom Sound to Vex all the way in Frankfurt. God bless you for taking part in that. If you were part of that, God really bless you. You take the, not only the name of God with you, but also the image of freedom are with you. You were ambassadors for our university. So God bless you. Uh, that being said, we missed you <laughs> in our service last week because uh, where's Gabriel? Pastor Gabriel, thank you so much last week. I was pitying him a bit because he did almost everything up here from singing after, after the service. I wrote to him, I, thank you so much, but are you okay? Your voice, everything. Uh, but that's, that's the nature of this service. Amen. Amen. We are very dynamic. Amen. Amen. We don't let anything pull us down. Not even when everybody is off campus, this service will go on. Amen. Amen. And, and, and that's the commitment. It's, it's, a, it's a testimony to our lives as Christians. And uh, I really appreciate all the effort that you put into it. Do we have anyone worshiping with us for the first time? For the first time. Regular faces, keep your hands down, please. <laughs> Those planning. Do we have someone like that? Uh, we are a very small but global family. So anyone worshiping with us, we want to know your name, where you are uh, 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 visiting us from, and just to share a bit about yourself so that when we close, we can say proper hello and hi to you. So if we have someone here like that, 
I can see some new faces, but I'm not sure whether they are uh, first time here or not. But Pastor John, maybe you can go to the role there. I see a sister there. <laughs> My name is Antonia, and I come from Stuttgart. It's like six, seven hours from here. Amen. So. Yes. Thank you for coming, Antonia. And uh, six, seven hours, yes. It's, it's almost the same time if I take a flight from Berlin to my country. So we are all from very far away. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. Any other? I see a brother here. Uh, it's my first time of seeing you. I'm sorry, maybe you've been here before, but... Can you tell us uh, your name? I'm Gideon. That's just not my first time coming here. This is not your first time, yeah. but first time meeting you. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, if there's no new uh, uh, face here, then all the regular faces. A big amen to you. Wave, wave, wherever you are. Amen. God bless you. God bless you for being here. Um... I would, like to, I would like to bring to your attention that this service, we still need your support, your help. We need your talent to support in this service. Um, do you know why the, the Adventist church or the church on campus, we have the English service? It's, it's not because we love to speak English all the time or throughout. Actually, I have a dream that one day a French speaker will stand here and preach in French, and the whole service will be in French and translated to the languages that we can all understand. I have a dream that Swahili will be preached here. I have a dream that Mir Burmese language will be spoken here. I have a dream that Patwa will be spoken here. I have a dream that Romanian language will be spoken here. Amen to that in addition to German and all other languages. Yeah, so the service is international service, not English service. So we encourage everyone to be part of it. Don't worry about oh, my, my English, my this, my that. Speak your language, we'll get a translator to do it for us. That being said, we need all of us to be part of this service. We need a media team, technical team, uh, we, we, we need to update our social media handles yeah, to, 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 to tell the world how, 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 how fellowshipping together is. So we need you. There are many of you who know how to operate gadgets and devices. Very soon we're going to have a website. We need people to help in that as well. So I'm throwing this to you. Be part. Be part of the service. Amen. And also the music team. I was very happy to see four strong people standing up here, and you could feel with me the melody of the, 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 the harmony of the voices, amen. amen. Last week, we didn't see that number. Uh, and I pray that moving forward, we get more of these numbers up here. So the music team, if you can sing, if you can play any instrument, you are more than welcome to join us. We are a family. We are a global family. And, and one of the reasons why this service is, 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 is also going on is because we minister beyond even Freedom South. We have friends, families that worship with us all over the globe. Yeah, so let us engage ourselves in the service so that even the output that will go out there will also be quality output in terms of our singing, in terms of our worship as well. If you will help out, say amen. amen. Oh, oh, the amen is very low. Say amen. amen. Okay, I'm looking at the maps that said amen. <laughs> this afternoon, uh, after the service, we'll have a very short meeting at the back everyone who's already in the singing group or the, the music team, who's in the technical team, anyone who wants to join any of these 
department, even the ushery department, please, we need people for that. We will meet at the corner there. Just pass by and let us have a very short conversation. Amen. And then after that, we go for potluck. Now this is where the big amen comes. Amen. amen. After the service, we'll meet in shoots for our uh, potluck uh, fellowship. It's, it's always a, if you, look at the, if you looked at the program, there's a quotation here that there is bonding in eating together. Please bring something along. Amen. Amen. So bring something, let us all eat together. And after potluck, we continue our singing and exhortation hour. It's, it's just, I think, an hour, maximum hour, hour and 15 minutes. We don't take the whole afternoon to do that. So please join us as well. It's always filled with God's blessings, singing together and fellowshipping together. Amen. Amen. The last time we had a quiz, and my group, the group that I was in, we, we, we were not the last, but we're not the first as well. So we are preparing next time that we will have the quiz again. We hope to do better. It was a Bible quiz, Genesis 1, if you've forgotten. And, uh, and the quiz master, we have some issues to clear out with him. But it, overall, it went really well. So I invite you, let us partake in these programs as well. Now, I would invite uh, the chaplain to join me here. We have two special uh, Announcements for you. Stefan, you join us as well? I don't know. Okay. Yes. The pastor also. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so uh, we have a uh, uh, two person. What is, was is uh, Aufnahme in die Gemeinde? So we have a transfer from Nigeria to Germany in this church. And please, Gabriel and Moyo, please come to the front. So I think the most person here in this uh, service, they have the church letter, is that right? Church letter, the transfer letter, not here in Friedensau, uh, because uh, you study here and then you may be away. But they stay a longer time still here, and they need a longer time to stay here. So we, uh, we are happy to have you here, and we want to say welcome to our church. And I want to add some points. So Gabriel what was at first here in Friedensau, and then he was married few weeks before he comes to Friedensau. And everyone, everyone wants to see his wife. And was it a year or how long it needs? Two years. Then she comes to Friedensau. Now, he is finished with her studying, and he is still studying. <laughs> but we know why. So, okay, now the point is, Gabriel is one of those who start this service. And he's still needed with Moyo together. There are some of the the, the team who uh, lead everything here for this service and organize everything. And we are so happy to have you here. And for a welcome, we want to give you a little present. So that's for you. And then we have someone, a little present here also. And uh, we have a diaconie team, and they put it in this nice paper. And uh, I asked, what is inside? <laughs> 
So and I ask my wife, and she says, there's a würfel. What is a würfel? A cube. A, cube. a cube where you can roll. And on every side, there's a prayer where you can pray. And I believe that is in German. So you can learn German further and further. <laughs> <laughs> That's no problem, he means. Okay, I like to read a Bible verse in German for you, okay? And uh, we, maybe we know this, uh, this Bible verse very well. That was Moses who told it to his fox. And uh, I read it, that is uh, 5th Moses chapter 31. Verse 6. And I read it in German. Sei mutig und stark. Hab keine Angst. Und lass dich von ihnen nicht einschüchtern. Denn der Herr, euer Gott, geht mit euch. Er hält immer zu euch und lässt euch nicht im Stich. So, you can read it maybe in English. And I thought maybe it will be good that you can listen it in your mother tongue. And I have had a good idea that can read someone. And I asked John, can you read it in mother tongue? Oh, we have not the same mother tongue. And I say, oh, you come from the same country. Yes. <laughs> so, sometimes something in my mother tongue, it listens different, and it goes maybe more to my heart. Sometimes, if you read and listen something in the other mother tongue, in the other tongue, it can also reach your heart. What, we, what I wish you is that you stay strong, that you do what the Lord gives you in your hand, and that we can develop and grow up this church more and more. Thank you for this. Amen. I will pray for you. It's, um... So please stand up. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much that uh, from all over the world we have come together here in Friedensau to live together and also to worship together. We thank you for the diversity of life that we see here. And we thank you for, for MJ and for Gabriel, who've been with us for, for some time already, and for the ministry and the service that they have given to us and the uh, enthusiasm that they have shown. And so now that we've finally officially welcomed them with their membership here, we ask that you continue to bless them, that you be with them, that their service will continue to be a blessing to all of us and to them as well. We put them into your good care as we ask for all our students here in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Uh, please, the pastors, uh, please stay with me here. We have one more thing to do. And uh, this is to every one of us. You don't necessarily need to, we don't need your membership here for you to participate, yeah? Amen. So you can still participate. You, you just heard from, from, from their testimonies. Gabriel and MJ have been here for a long time, but now their membership is here. And they've been part of the service right from day one without thinking about it. So don't think about that. Be actively involved, and God will bless you. But if you have the opportunity, bring the membership. Amen. Now we have a, a second. Uh, is Valentin and the wife here? Please join us. Please join us. Um, today might be the last Sabbath they are worshiping with us. Last, uh, just yesterday, Valentin defended his uh, thesis. 
It's, it's, it's the first thesis to be defended uh, within the, the, the pastoral ministry program, and it was a very successful defense. Amen. Amen. So, I would, like, I would like us to do the taxi driver analysis. Yeah, this is from the social science, where you summarize your thesis, what you did, in a very simple, easy language. We are not all theologians. Uh, what did you write about? What did you defend? Just a short uh, summary of that. I wrote about pastoral transfer and how uh, this practice in the Adventist church influenced the project in the churches in Romania. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Did you hear that? Powerful thesis. Those of you still writing, you know, uh, he's done it, so you can do it. Amen. Amen. So, uh, they have worshipped with us since day one. And we, one thing I like about Valentin is, you know, this uh, service, sometimes we have to de do some things spontaneously. Because some people opt out last minute and, and some are getting sick. And anytime you ask any of them to support, they always say yes. Amen to that. Amen. And, and I really admire that. They are always in the Sabbath school contributing, helping us all to understand the lessons, very actively involved with us here. And personally, it saddens me that they are going to leave us. But I believe that there is more ahead of his ministry for him back where he's going. And uh, we'll pray for, 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 for the two of you and ask God to, to, to really bless your ministry. And uh, the, the wonderful time you've shared with us, may we all of us here who experience the fellowship with them, may, may that fellowship stay with us and always remember them. And please, you always have to look back to Freedom Sal. Freedom Sal, you can't just pass through and go without looking back. And uh, if you miss us, just go to YouTube. We'll still be broadcasting. <laughs> and uh, just write hi there on the comment section. We know you're okay. Uh, join us on our Wednesday prayers if you can, Zoom. Uh, I'm still saying this because we are a family and we want you to still be part of us, even though you are not presently with us. So please uh, step here. And uh, one of the pastors, I'm not going to mention names. They will, they will decide among themselves, we'll pray for you. <laughs> it has been decided. <laughs> Gracious God, Friensau is also marked by coming and going. And this morning we, we want to appreciate Valentin and Betty who, who were here with us, who worshiped with us, who lived among us, and since this may be their final Sabbath with us here in Friedensau, we want to dismiss them with your blessing and with our good thoughts and wishes. And so we bring them before you, and we thank you first of all that Valentin was able to successfully defend his thesis. We thank you that um, they can look back on a, a experience, a good time here, but maybe even the challenging times here in Friedensau. And in all of this, they saw you and your hand at work even in their lives. And so with confidence, Lord, we place them into your hands and we thank you that you will walk with them wherever they go, whether it's back to Romania or elsewhere. And uh, we, 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 we ask that you give them even better experiences and more blessing than they um, experienced and received here. And maybe once or twice, we can hear back from them, hear some echoes of your work in their lives, which is also an encouragement for the rest, for the rest of us here. So we thank you that you are a good God, that you know us all, and that we are, each one of us, so important to you. And with that confidence, Lord, we place them into your good care. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Thank you very much. God is good. And all the time. Yes, I know, I know you. It's, it's not easy to say uh, depart ways with wonderful people, but cheer up. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Now we'll have the children's story. God bless you. Genau, Michi muss auch noch kommen. Michi, aber die, die, die Geschichte ist in Englisch. Ja, alles klar, komm. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Let me just check something. Oh, great. Today, do you know who's having, who, who will preach today? Hmm? Okay, well, you'll find out. When, when he goes there and preach. But I know what he's going to talk about. He's going to talk about the good shepherd. Right? Good. <laughs> the good shepherd, which is great because that's the word I heard all my life. And I don't think I've ever seen one. Who of you has ever seen a shepherd? Mm -hmm. You? You seen a shepherd? No, the Salzstange is more interesting. Oi. Have you ever seen a shepherd? That's exactly my reaction as well. Like, what about you? Shepherd? No? No? Shepherd? No? No? Michi, hast du schon mal einen Hirten gesehen? Nee, ich auch nicht. That's my problem. I haven't seen one either. Anybody there? Ever seen a shepherd? Well, why don't you sit here then? No, ever, no, no, sorry. Well, that's wonderful. Great. Blessed people. Um, maybe I should ask you what they do. What do they do? They call sheep. Okay. They call the sheep. Oh, they take care of the sheep. Okay, so shepherds have something to do with sheep. Have you ever seen a sheep? Yeah, okay. Are they big, small? They're fluffy, aren't they? Yeah, F sheep are fluffy. No? Okay, never mind. So shepherds take care of sheep. And how do they take care of sheep? Anybody? Well, none of us have ever seen one. The, the learned people there in the back. How do she shepherds take care of the sheep? You all had your hands up just a moment ago. They bring it to the best place for them. Okay, so the shepherds bring the sheep to the best place for the sheep. Not necessarily the shepherd, but the sheep. Okay? And I was wondering, how, they, how do they do that? And I found a Bible text. It's in John. Now, I don't know if the preacher is going to take the same text later on, but repetition deepens the impression. John 10, looking. <laughs> Verse 4. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, the, here Jesus talks about being a shepherd. And he says this. Whenever the shepherd has gathered, gathered all his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice. Okay? So, apparently, 
Shepherds bring the sheep to where they have to go by walking in front of them and saying stuff, and the sheep just follow. They walk behind the shepherd, and they follow the shepherd because they hear his voice, because they know the voice. Have you all heard my voice today? Yeah? You? Yeah? Have you heard my voice? No? Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me hear it. This is my voice. Das ist meine Stimme. Hast du meine Stimme gehört? Ja, genau. We're going to try this. Okay, I'm going to pretend to be the shepherd and you pretend to be sheep. Yep. Now, this is only going to work if we all do what the Bible text says. All right? What did the Bible text say? Where does the shepherd go? In front or behind? In front. In front. But it was a 50-50 chance. So, so well done. Well done. And what does the shepherd do? He says things. So, and they hear the voice. So I'm going to talk. And you hear my voice. And then you follow where I'm going. Okay? Should we try that? You're all sheep. Okay? You're sheep too. I'm trying to be the shepherd. And Michi, Michi passt auf, dass alles mit rechten Dingen zugeht. Ja? Michi bleibt hier und wartet auf uns, dass wir zurückkommen. Don't worry, we, go, we won't go far. So, sheep. All the sheep. All the sheep. Sheep. Are there any sheep here? Are there any sheep? So apparently, shepherds go in front of the sheep. So I'm going in front, so I'm looking around. Are there sheep behind me? Oh yeah, look, there is some. Oh, there's a sheep there. But they, they stand. They don't, they don't sit down. Okay, and so let's walk, okay? And while the, while the, while the, Meh. while the shepherd talks, the sheep follow because they, they hear the voice of the shepherd, and so they just follow. Are you still following me? You can you still hear my voice? Can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice? No. No? Okay, let me talk louder then. No, I won't. You still follow the shepherd? Okay. All right. Let me see if, if, if the experiment's still successful. Yep, most of the sheep are still here. Okay, let's have a look. Good. This is only going to work if you listen to what I'm saying and stay behind me. Okay, we walk. We walk. The sheep. Okay. Well, that's a pretty, I mean, that's like a 90% success rate we have here. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, where is the shepherd going? Where is he going? Where is the shepherd going? Ah, okay. And is the sheep following? Are the sheep following? Let me see. Okay, good. Very good. Very good. Oh, look at this. We are back to where we started. Very good. So, you followed me and I kept talking and you listened to what I was saying. That's very good. Well done. Give yourself a hand. Now, in the text, Je yeah, in, in the text, Jesus says that, that he is the good shepherd. He is the shepherd. And that the sheep follow the shepherd because he goes ahead and because they hear his voice. So the shepherd doesn't push the sheep like, Oi, go ahead! No, he goes ahead and they just walk behind. And it's the same thing with Jesus. Jesus doesn't force us. He doesn't stand behind us and says, Go, go, go! No, he walks ahead of us. And we just follow Jesus. But... In order for that to work, we have to do two things. What do you think we have, to, we have to do? You have to listen, and you have to know who you listen to. Hmm? So, how do, we, how do we listen to Jesus? Well, it's not like me talking to a microphone. Sometimes we hear Jesus' voice when we read the Bible. Sometimes we get a thought when we pray. And that may be God talking to us. But we need to know his voice, meaning, what does Jesus sound like? What is he like? And that we find out when we read stories about Jesus, that he was a nice person, that he loved people, especially children. 
And the more we spend time reading about Jesus and praying to Jesus, the better we get to know him. And the easier we can listen to him. Because he is just like a shepherd who goes ahead and people follow him. Not just little children, but big people as well. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Shall we pray? Yay! Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that you compared yourself to a shepherd who walks ahead of the sheep and the sheep listen and just walk behind. And that's what you do in our lives. We, we like to hear what you say when we read the Bible, when we read stories about you, and we just want to follow you because you're a good person, you're a good shepherd. And for that, we, th we thank you, especially that you love all these children here. In your name we pray. Amen. Sometimes it's hard for me to understand why we pull away from each other so easily, even though we are all walking on the very same road. We build dividing walls between our brothers and our sisters. But today, I don't care what label you choose to wear. If you believe in Jesus, you belong with me. The power we share is all I care to see. As we can change this world forever. If you join with me, join and see. You're my brother, you're my sister So take me by the hands Together we will walk Until he until he comes There's no more We'll be walking The day will soon come When we all be as one And with our mighty voice together We will proclaim That Jesus Jesus Christ is our King And it's gonna echo All through this holy It's gonna shake the nations And all the world will see
Let's remain seated as we sing the song before the sun. we can safely go. As we collect the offering, the ushers, please. We'll be singing from SDH 508, Anywhere with Jesus. And only two stanzas, the first stanza and the last one.
let's read the Bible reading for today. It's from John chapter 10, verse 37 to 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they know me. They follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. This is the Bible reading for uh, today. And uh, now I will invite uh, here uh, in front uh, the speaker for today. Uh, I think all of us know him, but uh, I think every time it's an opportunity to find something more about the person who are near us. And I have two questions for uh, our rector. So the first question, it sounds like this. Do the teachers... Uh, in general, and the rector in particular of the Friedensa University, are nervous during the exam week? <laughs> because we are. <laughs> well, we may be nervous when we are examiners, but looking at you as students, we are very calm because we know what you know, we know what you are able to do, and we have confidence in your success by the grace of God. And thank you very much. And the second question is, what is your fav favorite SDA hymnal? Or one of the favorites? Okay. Yes, there are many, of course. And to be honest, I'm not so familiar with the SDA hymnal. I know the German hymnal better. But I, there's one in both hymnals that is, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. This is kind of a German hymn, you know, by Martin Luther. But it's internationally, and I, I like it in, in any language. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I will, I will pray for you, and then we will listen to your sermon. Our Holy Father, we are thankful because you are here with us. We are thankful because uh, we had the opportunity to worship you in our songs, in our prayers, in our uh, gifts that we're offering, in our tithes and offerings. Help uh, those offerings to, to reach those places where you need them, and help us to be uh, freely giving every time and to be happy to return your tithe and to happily offering our offerings. We are asking you now to be with us, to help us to learn from your word. Help us to learn from your word to live a beautiful life. Give to all of us who will listen the sermon, give us attention and open our mind to understand your message for us. Please be with our brother who will preach and give him the right words to deliver your message. Use him in the way you know is best for the following moments. In Jesus' pray, I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. By the way, singing hymns, we have just sung, Anywhere with Jesus I can go to sleep. I hope this is not here and now. <laughs> but thank you for the music, thank you for this introduction, and thank you for this wonderful worship service we are having together. Dear church, here in this chapel and wherever you are watching us, welcome to this um, sermon and to this worship service. I guess that uh, it is very familiar, at least for some of you, this situation or this um, image, a shepherd and a flock of sheep. Maybe some of you have experienced that, coming more from the countryside. To those who have been raised in the, in the cities, this may not be a very much familiar image. But thanks to our pastor and to the kids, we are very now used to what, you know, they are doing, what a shepherd and sheep are doing. So I think uh, this uh, image can be meaningful to us as well. And sometimes if you go to Grüntal over there, there is a sheep, a flock of sheep sometimes, or we see elsewhere them passing by. 
usually we um, combine with this image of a sheep um, and a shepherd, we associate care that was mentioned, belonging maybe, protection, and guidance. So, of course, we know that Jesus uses this example. Our attention has been turned to, to uh, John chapter 10. And this was a very familiar image for his listeners because they lived in an area where they are used to sheep and, of course, they knew the image from the Old Testament. But very frequently, God has been associated with a shepherd and the people of Israel with sheep or with a flock of sheep. And of course, all of Jesus' listeners knew Psalms 23. And we do also, don't we? Amen? We know Psalms 23 about the Good Shepherd. And now, in John chapter 10, when Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd, this was kind of a challenge for his listeners. So let's turn to John chapter 10, if you want to follow. And I start with reading the first three verses. So this is John chapter 10, 1 to 3. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd in contrast to strangers or even to thieves and robbers. Meaning that he as the good shepherd, has the rightful access to the sheep, and so they follow him. But the others, the thieves and the robbers, they bring destruction. He, however, brings true life. This is, of course, kind of a polemic against the leadership of his time. But now we, re we learn from verse 6 that the listeners did not understand the meaning of what he had said. So Jesus continues, and we may say he even intensifies his speech. Let's read verses 11 to 13. John 10, verses 11 to 13. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Jesus again describes and calls himself the good shepherd in contrast to the day laborers or as they are called here, the hirelings. He, he knows the sheep and he cares for them. And he even brings the sheep together, even from other folds. And, yes, he gives life to the sheep. And now it seems that the listeners understood what Jesus was meaning. That he identified himself with the one sent by God. He identified himself with the Messiah, with the Son of God. And this they could not or would not want to understand. So finally, we read in verse 39, they wanted to arrest him, but he eluded their grasp. Now, what can we take from this image for today? Even if this situation is far from our daily experience. Of course, Jesus interprets what he is saying, and so I think this is still meaningful to us. And I can realize that there are some things he talks about what he, what the shepherd is doing, and he also mentions what the sheep are doing. Now, first of all, he says, the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. This is verse 11. 
And Jesus repeats this sentence again and again. In the whole chapter, we read four times that Jesus gives his life for the sheep. The good shepherd gives his life. It seems to be very important to him to mention that. It seems to be an essential characteristic of the good shepherd. Even more so, it seems to be his identity as a good shepherd to give his life for the sheep. Frankly speaking, I don't know if this could be the case, literally speaking. I mean, if a shepherd would really be willing to give his life for an animal, I don't know. But I know that the good shepherd was willing to give his life for his people, for you and for me, amen? amen. So, our good shepherd is doing even much more than a literal good shepherd would be willing to do. Jesus died for his people. And he emphasizes that his life was not taken away, but he freely gave his life. At this time, he doesn't say why. And maybe it was not clear for his listeners at that point in time, because his crucifixion was still in future. But this was a, a kind of an announcement of his suffering and death, as he also did so in the other Gospels. I think that he uses this image of a good shepherd to die for his sheep to mention or to point into the near future where he was going to be crucified. We, of course, we are looking back to his death and we know why he died. He died for us. So we may say that in these few words Jesus uses, a good shepherd dies for his sheep, is kind of a summary of the plan of redemption, what Jesus was doing or died for us. And we are grateful for this good shepherd. There may be situations in our lives where we have kind of no orientation anymore. We have lost our way. You know, the society, the, the situation in our world is so, is so complex that we may lose our orientation. Or even situations in our lives may be so difficult that we have lost our way. And this is good news that we have a good shepherd who is going in front of us as we have learned, not behind. He's going ahead of us and so he can lead us and guide us into our and into his future. Maybe there are situations when we feel discouraged. There may be a crisis in our life or in our family. And we may feel lost or desperate or in need. And it's good to know that there is a good shepherd who, like Psalms 23, tells us who is leading us to, to fresh water and to green pastures, that we can be nourished again, that we can be revived again, that we can feel life and good life again. Maybe there's a situation where we feel worthless. Who am I? What can I do? Is anybody looking at me? Is even God looking on me? And we realize, yes, this is a good shepherd who gave his life for me. That's my worth. Now, this good shepherd who gave his life for us is also willing to give good life to us. This is what he's saying in, in verses 10 and also in verse 28. And as I mentioned before, Psalms 23 was well known to Jesus' listeners. And they know when Jesus was alluding to that, that the good shepherd cares for his sheep. He gives them food, green pastures, fresh water. He, leaves them on a, he leads them on a good way. He helps them to survive, but not only to survive, but as verse 10 says, to give them life and give it abundantly. 
Life to the full, as another translation says. Life and abundance. Yes, our Good Shepherd also cares for us. He wants us to lead a good, a meaningful, and a fulfilled life. What is that? Is it wealth, happiness, and health? This is not too bad, of course. But that's not the whole life, is it? Because we, yes, we all know there are also other aspects to our lives. Deprivation, hardship, illness, whatever. But yet, it's possible to lead a good life in abundance because Jesus, our good shepherd, has given us this life. And this is more than a biological life. The term that is used here in the Greek language points beyond that points to eternal life. And indeed, in verse 28, Jesus says it very clearly, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Amen? Amen. Jesus, who died for us, also rose again. He conquered death, and for that reason, we shall also resurrect one day. We shall have eternal life. This is what we read throughout the New Testament. This was the hope over the centuries of the Christian history, and this is our hope. Is it not? Amen. We also have this hope. Now, this is what Jesus, the Good Shepherd, was doing and still is doing for us. And now he also tells us what the sheep are doing. They follow the Good Shepherd as we learned from our pastor and the children. It, was, it is mentioned four times in this chapter that the sheep follow their good shepherd. They only follow the good shepherd. They only follow the shepherd who gave his life for them. They only follow the shepherd who gives true and meaningful life to them. And there are also other sheep coming to his flock who also are willing to follow them. Why? Because they know him. Because they know his voice. Jesus emphasizes this also frequently in this chapter that it is the voice of the Good Shepherd that makes the difference. Knowing his voice, hearing his voice, is connected to following the Good Shepherd. So we ask, what is so special about the voice of the Shepherd? To answer this, I will present you a story that I found. This is a story true story that a shepherd told. He said, when a lamb is born in my flock, I carry it in my arms as often as I can for the first week. While I talk to it, the lamb gets used to my voice. The lamb will never forget my voice and listen to it for the rest of its life. Then this incident happened. An innkeeper friend had asked me to take his five sheep with me and my flock. We walked through the Neckar Valley. Neckar is a river in Germany. We walked through this valley. The river Neckar was on the left, and a country road was on the right. It had been cold that night, and there was a fog over the river and the meadows, so the Neckar River was barely visible. As I walked along the road with my herd, with my flock, a large truck drove past. The driver pressed his horn to greet me. The sheep were terribly frightened by this loud noise. Panic broke out in the flock. They simply ran for it. Because of the fog, the sheep couldn't see that they were running towards the river. The sheep the steep embankment, the ice-cold water, and the current. My flock was in grave danger. I shouted as loud as I could, stop, stop. 
And lo and behold, my sheep heard my voice. They instinctively sensed, it's our shepherd. He is there. We don't need to run away. The memory of the shepherd prevailed over the panic and the fear. The flock came to a halt just before the riverbank. Only five sheep ran on blindly. The innkeeper sheep. They did not know me. They were not used to my voice. That's a special thing. The sheep recognize the good shepherd by his voice. That's why they follow him. That's why he can protect them. Now, what does that mean to us? It was very interesting to me to notice that in the Gospels, usually, the words of Jesus are emphasized. And the followers of Jesus are asked to follow his words. So, for example, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, whoever hears my words and does them. Or in John 5, we read, whoever hears my word and believes him. John 14, whoever loves me will keep my word, and so on and so on. And of course, we find the words of Jesus in the Gospels, in the New Testament, and we are asked to hear and to obey the words of Jesus. This is important for our faith. But we also know exactly the same words can be spoken by different people, right? So the voice makes the difference. The words say something about the content, but the voice interprets how this content is to be understood. Just a simple example, if I say, come here, or if I say, come here, that's a difference, is it not? The voice also tells me something about the person that is speaking. I think hardly anything is so unmistakable about a person than the voice. We recognize somebody by the voice, even if we do not understand the words. Have you experienced that? So I realize that there are many, many, many words spoken in this world, in religion, in the churches, and there may also be many correct and right words spoken, being spoken. But can I hear the voice of my Good Shepherd in these words? When many, many, many words are spoken, the question is, how are they said? Do I hear the words, do, excuse me, do I hear the voice of my Good Shepherd? When I look into our Seventh-day Adventist church, there are discussions going on. The last weeks and the last months and the last years, you name the various topics. They are not only going on in Germany, but also sometimes worldwide. There are many, 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 many words. Also some right and correct words. But sometimes they are spoken with a cold, bossy, heartless voice. Is this the voice of Jesus? What would be the voice of Jesus like? This is not mentioned in the Gospels, of course. But we know something about his personality. We know something about his, his nature. And the voice is the expression of the nature of a person, is it not? So, therefore, I believe that the voice of Jesus is kind, is friendly, is warm, is loving, is uplifting. It's not rough or harsh. It's gentle, it's soothing, pleasant. If I am supposed to listen to words even if they may be right. 
but if they are spoken coldly, unlovingly, I will not listen. This is not the voice of my good shepherd. I will follow words from which I hear the voice of Jesus, which is a loving and friendly and gentle voice. And my brothers and my sisters, I believe when we know our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, and when we have known him for years and for decades, maybe for a whole life, we know his voice, don't we? To this voice, I will listen. I will follow. Yes, Jesus is the good shepherd. He has given his life for us. And he brought life and abundance to us. He leads us well. And I will follow him. I will trust him. I will listen to his voice. Because it's good, gentle, friendly, and loving voice. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for a word of prayer, please. Our Jesus, loving Jesus, our Good Shepherd, we thank you what we can read about you, what we can hear about you in the Gospels, what you have revealed about you, that you love us, that you have died for us, that you are going to guide us and lead us in our lives. And this we have experienced. Thank you for that. But yes, there are sometimes dark valleys and difficulties, challenges in our lives. Maybe we sometimes do not exactly know what to do and where to go. And then, Lord, speak to us. Speak to us with your voice, with your loving, kind, and friendly voice. We will listen. We will obey. We will follow you. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. turning back if you could all rise I want you to take a moment and just forget whoever is around you, it's you and Jesus now we want to follow Jesus like the pastor said the one who gave us true meaning our life true meaning picked us in that condemned form transformed us into the one who is saved, amen so can we sing I have decided together I have decided
May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Today our service was packed a bit, so, but thank you for your patience, for still staying with us and worshiping with us. And thank you so much, Roland, for the message. And uh, I think the message also goes for leadership as well. We are all leaders in one way or the other, pastors, professionals in the making. Let us have a gentle voice and a voice that will let others follow. Amen. Thank you. Uh, just right away when we all start to get up, please, the invitation is there. If you already sing in the music group, if you are in the technical group, if you want to now be part of it, if you have a department we've not even thought about in your head, just join us. 